Welcome to the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast, Ask Anything, Episode 9, where designers and hosts Tom and Tracy Hazard answer your questions about the who, where, why, how, and what of fused filament fabrication. Hi, this is Tom. And Tracy. And we're the hosts of WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. And this is our Ask Us Anything segment. Well, almost anything. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, who's today's question from? Uh, Brian from Tarzana. And uh, what's Brian asking? Brian's asking us if, when we use different filaments, if we're afraid of damaging our our extruders or our machines. Oh, well, you know what? That's a really good question. You know, our first printer uh, about a year ago, from the time we're recording this, uh, was a MakerBot fifth generation printer, and we still use it today. It's a yeah. fine printer, and I'm sure we'll talk lots about our, our thoughts on that printer in a, in a different podcast, but. Uh, MakerBot uh, sells that printer as a PLA-only printer, and in fact, I think their warranty says you have to use their PLA material, and it, you may avoid the warranty if you use others. So uh, I'm going to you know, maybe get ourselves in trouble with our warranty on this, but it's already <laughs> almost a year old. But uh, we've run every different PLA we can find through this thing. and Because we, we wanted good color. And there's yeah. not a lot of good color out there, so I'm going to go to whatever manufacturer makes a good color. Now, I think that MakerBot, since the very beginning when we bought it, has a bigger color program, so they're more likely to, you know, get my business now. Well, they're but they weren't, yeah, yeah, they weren't at the time, so I think that was an issue. But, but the reality is, is that you know, I mean, it's not a bad question. It the filament has a lot to do with. Uh, how good a quality print you get. So if it's gumming up and making a sticky looking print with lots of hairs and pulls on it, it's probably doing some damage to your extruder. I don't know if it's damaging it as much, but it can certainly make maintaining it a little more difficult. If you yeah. clog it up, you may have to unclog it. And I've been through that a number of times. Yeah, yeah. The Thomas spent many weekends with, you know, hours uh, drilling out the inside of the extruder and cleaning it out and using chemicals, trying whatever you can to get it out. <laughs> and it can be done. Uh, extruders yeah. can be unclogged. And, and really, once you know what you're doing, I actually don't think it's all that difficult. But I think... More importantly, you know, we find different PLAs work better than others in the MakerBot because the MakerBot really is made to work at one specific temperature. Yeah. And some PLAs are engineered to melt a little bit lower temperatures. Yeah, some PLAs we found have a really broad range of temperature, like 180 to 230. That's just too big a range, I think, I for the MakerBot. It is. Uh, and, and while they say you can adjust the temperature that it prints at, it's not easy to do. And so far, I haven't really had any success being able to do that. And yeah. I, I've tried. But let's let's now, I mean, well, I guess to close the loop on the MakerBot with that PLA and, and then to talk about our other printer, uh, the MakerBot. I've found no ill effects in all reality of using different yeah. PLAs. It doesn't hurt the printer in any way. And um, if it did, it would hurt only the extruder, which is a replaceable part that's maybe fifty bucks. You no, know, no, it's actually it's a little over a hundred for a new for a new oh. smart extruder. But still, it, by the time you pay for shipping and and taxes, you're into that printer for about three thousand dollars. So it's really not that much money to. Uh, you know, get your printer back in shape if you do end up messing it up. So to me, it, to us, it was worth the risk. Yeah, well, because we, we, you know, our goal was a lot of color, a lot of design variety. Maybe that's not your goal, but if that's so, then maybe you should stick with the, you know, the warranted filament. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um, you know, I mean, I think, you know, what you should do, Tom, is we should maybe throw up on YouTube a video of how to clean out the, the, the extruder. The, well, the MakerBot extruder, another fair warning yeah. for people out there, you if they don't want you to open that yeah, up. Yeah, I so was thinking maybe the LeapFrog one. warranty on that one if you, uh, if you do, although I'll tell you, I've done it. Um, but I haven't had to a lot recently. Yeah. They've really made a lot of improvements to that smart extruder. In terms of the LeapFrog, yes. I mean, uh, that's a more of a typical Bowden type of, of uh, FDM or FFF printer. Yeah. And uh, if it gets clogged, it's, you know, there are, good and then maybe better ways to unclog, unclog it. it so and well maybe you, that's something we can throw up on youtube and we uh, and we'll put that in the show notes so that everyone can link to that so if you have that problem and you have damaged your uh your uh, extruder already and that was sort of a backhanded question uh brian we'll have you we'll hook you up okay sounds good all right well uh hope that answers your question brian and uh 
hopefully other people have questions kind of like that. And, you know, we're here to answer anything about 3D printing, whether it's about business or about filament, about materials, about things you use, um, questions you want about us to answer. I mean, maybe we don't have the answer, but we'll, we'll try and find it that for you. That doesn't mean we're not very happy to go out and research it. Yep. and get you an answer so. so again to do that you have to go to the ask us link on our website or the ask us tab on our website and that's hasdesign.com and the ask us and then jump down halfway through the page and you'll see our speak pipe link where you just click a button and start recording as long as your microphone is on your computer okay thanks everybody we'll uh talk to you next time on wtfff